Efforts to create the world's first private mm. space station took a huge leap forward this morning when a Las Vegas aerospace company sent a hometown spacecraft into orbit. Well, yeah, well, the launch actually took place in Russia, but Mission Control is right here in our valley at the Bigelow Aerospace Plant. The Channel 8 I team was the only local news organization on the inside of today's launch. George Knapp has the exclusive story. A mere 11 months ago, this same mission control team was on pins and needles for the launch of the first spacecraft built at the Bigelow Aerospace Plant in North Las Vegas. The launch and deployment were flawless. Despite that success, the minutes leading up to the second launch were even more tense, both here and 11 time zones away at the Yezny launch facility in Russia, where company founder Bob Bigelow and 21 staffers have been preparing for the big moment. 160 seconds, flight parameters still reporting nominal. Last time was a big learning curve. Uh, this time was a lot of anticipation. Las Vegas, this is Las Launch Base. We are confirmed. The second time was also the charm. Just after 8 a.m. Las Vegas time, a huge Russian rocket blasted off from Yezny, carrying the Genesis 2 spacecraft. This is animation of the mission. Genesis 2 is a one-third scale inflatable space habitat. If all goes well, its solar panels will kickstart an expansion of the craft in orbit. Eventually, a larger version of this craft will be hooked up to form the world's first private space station, open for business to governments, corporations, and even space tourists. There are astronauts on this flight, critters including ants, scorpions, and Madagascar cockroaches, sent up to help test life support systems that will keep humans alive on future flights. Engineers also added a Las Vegas Touch, a robot-controlled space bingo game, as well as a program called Fly Your Stuff, items sent up by regular folks who paid for the tiny space. All sorts of things. So, you know, we have photographs of different family members. Uh, we have all sorts of little, uh, we had very constricted uh, mass and volume uh, restraints, but, you know, tokens, uh, metals, uh, you know, different little artifacts, art forms uh, that folks have made. Uh, Somebody just, said wedding rings? There was a wedding ring, yes. Is that guy saying uh, good riddance to the marriage? <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to be remembered forever, that's one way to do it. The serious side is that this second mission, a success so far, proves that private entities don't have to rely on NASA to get into space, that it's not a far-fetched futuristic dream. Engineers are already hard at work on the next step, Bigelow's Galaxy Craft, scheduled for launch next year. It'll be obviously a fairly substantial technological advance over, over Genesis. Um, Size-wise, it's probably about 50% larger volume. Um, it'll have a lot more power and a little more avionics. Um, we're starting to introduce some more advanced life support into that one. Yeah, that one's cranking right away. So, um, you know, we, we deal on pretty short time horizons here, and so it's always a, a push to get them done. Bigelow seems to have NASA's full attention these days. Earlier this week, NASA announced that for the first time, it hopes to open up the International Space Station to private enterprise, that is, sometime in the future. The local folks are pretty sure they're the ones who gave NASA the nudge. Absolutely, and that's what we're trying to do. We want to be the catalyst for the commercial uh, ventures in space. A prospect that no longer longer seems that far off. George Knapp, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. And just before 4 this afternoon, Bigelow made contact with Genesis 2 at their ground station. We're told everything's working according to plan and the systems are performing flawlessly.